American Sign Language is the predominant sign language of deaf communities in the United States and English-speaking parts of Canada. Besides North America, dialects of ASL and ASL-based Creoles are used in many countries around the world, including much of West Africa and parts of Southeast Asia. ASL is also widely learned as a second language, serving as a lingua franca. ASL is most closely related to French Sign Language. It has been proposed that ASL is a Creole language, although ASL shows features atypical of Creole languages, such as agglutinative morphology. ASL originated in the early 19th century in the American School for the Deaf in Hartford, Connecticut, from a situation of language contact. Since then, ASL use has propagated widely via schools for the deaf and deaf community organizations. Despite its wide use, no accurate count of ASL users has been taken, though reliable estimates for American ASL users range from 250,000 to 500,000 persons, including a number of children of deaf adults. ASL users face stigma due to beliefs in the superiority of spoken language to sign language compounded by the fact that ASL is often glossed in English due to the lack of a standard writing system. ASL signs have a number of phonemic components, including movement of the face and torso as well as the hands. ASL is not a form of pantomime, but iconicity does play a larger role in ASL than in spoken languages. English loan words are often borrowed through finger spelling, although ASL grammar is unrelated to that of English. ASL has verbal agreement and aspectual marking, and is a productive system of forming agglutinative classifiers. Many linguists believe ASL to be a subject-verb-object language, but there are several alternative proposals to account for ASL word order. Classification ASL emerged as a language in the American School for the Deaf, founded in 1817. This school brought together French Sign Language, various village sign languages, and home sign systems. ASL was created in this situation of language contact. ASL was influenced by its forerunners but distinct from all of them. The influence of FSL on ASL is readily apparent. For example, it has been found that about 58% of signs in modern ASL are cognate to Old French Sign Language signs. However, this is far less than the standard 80% measure used to determine whether related languages are actually dialects. This suggests that nascent ASL was highly affected by the other signing systems brought by the ASD students, despite the fact that the school's original director Laurent Clerc taught in FSL. In fact, Clerc reported that he often learned the student signs rather than conveying FSL. I see, however, and I say it with regret that any efforts that we have made or may still be making, to do better than, we have inadvertently fallen somewhat back of our copyright de la Euro unregistered trademark a permel par copyright e. Some of us have learned and still learn signs from uneducated pupils, instead of learning them from well-instructed and experienced teachers. It has been proposed that ASL is a creole with FSL as the superstrate language and with the native village sign languages as substrate languages. However, more recent research has shown that modern ASL does not share many of the structural features that characterize Creole languages. ASL may have begun as a Creole and then undergone structural change over time, but it is also possible that it was never a Creole-type language. There are modality-specific reasons that sign languages tend towards agglutination, for example the ability to simultaneously convey information via the face, head, torso, and other body parts. This might override Creole characteristics such as the tendency towards isolating morphology. Additionally, Clerk and Galaldit may have used an artificially constructed form of manually coded language in instruction rather than true FSL. Although the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia share English as a common oral and written language, ASL is not mutually intelligible with British Sign Language or Oran. All three languages show degrees of borrowing from English, but this alone is not sufficient for cross-language comprehension. It has been found that a relatively high percentage of ASL signs have similar translations in Orlan, which for oral languages would suggest that they belong to the same language family. However, this does not seem justified historically for ASL and Orlan, 
and it is likely that this resemblance is due to the higher degree of iconicity in signed languages in general, as well as contact with English. History Prior to the birth of ASL, signed language had been used by various communities in the United States. In the United States, as elsewhere in the world, hearing families with deaf children have historically employed ad hoc home sign, which often reaches much higher levels of sophistication than gestures used by hearing people in spoken conversation. As early as 1541 at first contact by Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, there were reports that the Plains Indians had developed a sign language to communicate between tribes of different languages. In the 19th century, a triangle of village sign languages was developed in New England, one in Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, one in Hanukkah, New Hampshire, and one in Sandy River Valley, Maine. Martha's Vineyard Sign Language, which was particularly important for the history of ASL, was used mainly in Chilmark, Massachusetts. Due to intermarriage in the original community of English settlers of the 1690s, and the recessive nature of genetic deafness, Chilmark had a high 4% rate of genetic deafness. MVSL was used even by hearing residents whenever a deaf person was present. ASL is thought to have originated in the American School for the Deaf, founded in Hartford, Connecticut in 1817. Originally known as the American Asylum, at Hartford, for the education and instruction of the deaf and dumb, the school was founded by the Yale graduate and divinity student Thomas Hopkins Galaudit. Galaudit, inspired by his success in demonstrating the learning abilities of a young deaf girl Alice Cokeswell, traveled to Europe in order to learn deaf pedagogy from European institutions. Ultimately, Galaudit chose to adopt the methods of the French Institute National de Jeunes Sauwards de Paris, and convinced Laurent Clerc, an assistant to the school's founder Charles Michel de la Permel par copyright e, to accompany him back to the United States. Upon his return, Galaudit founded the ASD on April 15, 1817. The largest group of students during the first seven decades of the school were from Martha Euro unregistered trademark S. Vineyard, and they brought MVSL with them. There were also 44 students from around Henniker, New Hampshire, and 27 from a Sandy River, Maine, each of which had their own village sign language. Other students brought knowledge of their own home signs. Laurent Clerc, the first teacher at ASD, taught using French Sign Language, which itself had developed in the Parisian School for the Deaf established in 1755. From this situation of language contact, a new language emerged, now known as ASL. More schools for the deaf were founded after ASD, and knowledge of ASL spread to these schools. In addition, the rise of deaf community organizations bolstered the continued use of ASL. Societies such as the National Association of the Deaf and the National Fraternal Society of the Deaf held national conventions that attracted signers from across the country. This all contributed to ASL's wide use over a large geographical area, atypical for a signed language. Up to the 1950s, the predominant method in deaf education was oralism a euro acquiring oral language comprehension and production. Linguists did not consider sign language to be true language, but rather something inferior. Recognition of the legitimacy of ASL was achieved by William Stokoe, a linguist who arrived at Gallaudet University in 1955 when this was still the dominant assumption. Aided by the civil rights movement of the 1960s, Stokoe argued for manualism, the use of sign language in deaf education. Stokoe noted that sign language shares the important features that oral languages have as a means of communication, and even devised a writing system for ASL. In doing so, Stokoe revolutionized both deaf education and linguistics. In the 1960s, ASL was sometimes referred to as Amslin, but this term is now considered obsolete. Population Counting the number of ASL speakers is difficult because ASL users have never been counted by the American census. The ultimate source for current estimates of the number of ASL users in the United States is a report for the National Census of the Deaf Population by Inn and Delk. Based on a 1972 survey of the NCDP, 
Yin and Delk provided estimates consistent with a signing population between 250,000 and 500,000. The survey did not distinguish between ASL and other forms of signing. In fact, the name ASL was not yet in widespread use. Incorrect figures are sometimes cited for the population of ASL speakers in the United States based on misunderstandings of known statistics. Demographics of the deaf population have been confused with those of ASL use, since adults who become deaf late in life rarely use ASL in the home. This accounts for currently cited estimations which are greater than 500,000. Such mistaken estimations can reach as high as 15 million. A 100,000-person lower bound has been cited for ASL users. The source of this figure is unclear, but it may be an estimate of prelingual deafness, which is correlated with but not equivalent to signing. ASL is sometimes incorrectly cited as the third or fourth most spoken language in the United States. These figures misquoting and Delk, who actually concluded that ASL speakers constituted the third largest population requiring an interpreter in court. Although this would make ASL the third most used language among monolinguals other than English, it does not imply that it is the fourth most spoken language in the United States, since speakers of other languages may also speak English. Geographic distribution, ASL is used throughout Anglo-America. This contrasts with Europe, where a variety of sign languages are used within the same continent. The unique situation of ASL seems to have been caused by the proliferation of ASL through schools influenced by the American School for the Deaf, wherein ASL originated, and the rise of community organizations for the deaf. Throughout West Africa, ASL-based sign languages are spoken by educated deaf adults. These languages, imported by boarding schools, are often considered by associations to be the official sign languages of their countries, and are named accordingly, for example Nigerian Sign Language, Ghanaian Sign Language. Such signing systems are found in Benin, Burkina Faso, Kati Edva, Ghana, Liberia, Mauritania, Mali, Nigeria, and Togo. Due to lack of data, it is still an open question how similar these sign languages are to the variety of ASL used in America. In addition to the aforementioned West African countries, ASL is reported to be used as a first language in Barbados, Bolivia, Cambodia, the Central African Republic, Chad, China, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gabon, Jamaica, Kenya, Madagascar, the Philippines, Singapore, and Zimbabwe. ASL is also used as a lingua franca throughout the deaf world, widely learned as a second language. Variation Variation in ASL is found throughout the United States and Canada. Just as there are accents in speech, there are regional accents in sign. People from the South sign slower than people in the North Euro even people from Northern and Southern Indiana have different styles. Mutual intelligibility among these ASL varieties is high, and the variation is primarily lexical. For example, there are three different words for English about in Canadian ASL. The standard way, and two regional variations, as shown in the videos on the right. Variation may also be phonological, meaning that the same sign may be signed in a different way depending on the region. For example, an extremely common type of variation is between the handships, and in signs with one hand shape. There is also a distinct variety of ASL used by the black deaf community. Black ASL evolved as a result of racially segregated schools in some states, which included the residential schools for the deaf. Black ASL differs from standard ASL in vocabulary, phonology, and some grammatical structure. While African American vernacular English is generally viewed as more innovating than standard English, Black ASL is more conservative than standard ASL, preserving older forms of many signs. Black Sign Language speakers use more two-handed signs than in mainstream ASL, are less likely to show a simulatory lowering of signs produced on the forehead, and use a wider signing space. Modern Black ASL borrows a number of idioms from AAVE. For instance, the AAVE idiom I feel you is calped into Black ASL. ASL is used internationally as a lingua franca, 
and a number of closely related sign languages derived from ASL are used in many different countries. Even so, there have been varying degrees of divergence from standard ASL and these imported ASL varieties. Bolivian Sign Language is reported to be a dialect of ASL, no more divergent than other acknowledged dialects on the other hand, it is also known that some imported ASL varieties have diverged to the extent of being separate languages. For example, Malaysian Sign Language, which has ASL origins, is no longer mutually comprehensible with ASL and must be considered its own language. For some imported ASL varieties, such as those used in West Africa, it is still an open question how similar they are to American ASL. When communicating with hearing English speakers, ASL speakers often use what is commonly called pigeon signed English or contact signing, a blend of English structure with ASL. Various types of PSE exist, ranging from highly English influenced PSE, to PSE which is quite close to ASL lexically and grammatically, but may alter some subtle features of ASL grammar. Finger spelling may be used more often in PSE than it is normally used in ASL. There have been some constructed sign languages, known as manually coded English, which match English grammar exactly and simply replace spoken words with signs. These systems are not considered to be varieties of ASL. Tactile ASL is a variety of ASL used throughout the United States by and with a deaf-blind. It is particularly common among those with Usher's syndrome, found especially in Louisiana and Seattle. This syndrome results in deafness from birth followed by loss of vision later in life. Consequently, those with Usher's syndrome often grow up in the deaf community using ASL, and later transition to TASL. TASL differs from ASL in that signs are produced by touching the palms, and there are some grammatical differences from standard ASL in order to compensate for the lack of non-manual signing. Stigma ASL faces ableist stigma due to beliefs that spoken language is superior to sign language, as well as the higher perceived status of English and the fact that ASL is sometimes written using English words. The majority of children born to deaf parents are hearing. These children, known as coders are often more culturally deaf than deaf children, the majority of whom are born to hearing parents. Unlike many deaf children, Coders acquire ASL as well as deaf cultural values and behaviors from birth. These bilingual hearing children may be mistakenly labeled as being slow learners, or as having language difficulties due to preferential attitudes towards spoken language. Writing Systems Although there is no well-established writing system for ASL, written sign language dates back almost two centuries. The first systematic writing system for a sign language seems to be that of Roch Ambroise or Gus Bar Copyright Bin, developed in 1825. However, written sign language remained marginal among the public. In the 1960s linguist William Stoko created Stoko notation specifically for ASL. It is alphabetic, with a letter or diacritic for every phonemic hand shape, orientation, motion, and position though it lacks any representation of facial expression, and is better suited for individual words than for extended passages of text. Stoko used this system for his 1965A Dictionary of American Sign Language on Linguistic Principles. The first writing system to gain use among the public was sign writing, proposed in 1974 by Valerie Sutton. Sign writing consists of more than 5,000 distinct iconic graphs glyphs. Currently it is in use in many schools for the deaf, particularly in Brazil, and has been used in international sign language forums with speakers and researchers in more than 40 countries, including Brazil, Ethiopia, France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia, Tunisia, and the United States. Sutton sign writing has both a printed and an electronically produced form so that persons can use the system anywhere that oral languages are written. The systematic examination of the international sign writing alphabet as an equivalent usage structure to the international phonetic alphabet for spoken languages has been proposed. According to some researchers, sign writing is not a phonemic orthography, and does not have a one-to-one -one map from phonological forms to written forms. 
This assertion has been disputed in the process for each country to look at the ISWA and create a phonemic morphemic assignment of features of each sign language was proposed by researchers MSC. Roberto Caesar raised Da Costa and Madsen Baratu in a thesis forum on June 23, 2014. At this point the Wikimedia has accepted sign writing for inclusion in a translation project of articles written in English and then translated into ASL and is working on a specific translation engine. The most widely used transcription system among academics is Hamnosis, developed at the University of Hamburg. Based on Stoko notation, Hamnosis was expanded to about 200 graphs in order to allow transcription of any sign language. Phonological features are usually indicated with single symbols, though the group of features that comprises a handshape is indicated collectively with a symbol. Several additional candidates for written ASL have appeared over the years, including Sign Font, ASL Alphabet, and C5S. For English-speaking audiences, ASL is often glossed using English words. These glosses are typically all capitalized and are arranged in ASL order. For example, the ASL sentence dog now chase nine equals three cat, meaning the dog is chasing the cat, uses now to mark ASL progressive aspect and shows ASL verbal inflection for the third person. However, glossing is not used to write the language for speakers of ASL. Phonology Each sign in ASL is composed of a number of distinctive components. A sign may use one hand or both. Each hand assumes a handshape with a particular orientation in a particular location on the body or in the signing space, and may involve movement. Changing any one of these may change the meaning of a sign, as illustrated by the ASL signs Think and Disappointed, there are also meaningful non-manual signals in ASL. This may include movement of the eyebrows, the cheeks, the nose, the head, the torso, and the eyes. William Stoko proposed that these components are analogous to the phonemes of spoken languages. There has also been a proposal that these are analogous to classes like place and manner of articulation. As in spoken languages, these phonological units can be split into distinctive features. For instance, the handships and are distinguished by the presence or absence of the feature, a plus or minus closed thumb, as illustrated to the right. ASL has processes of allophony and phonotactic restrictions. There is ongoing research into whether ASL has an analog of syllables in spoken language. Grammar Morphology ASL has a rich system of verbal inflection. This involves both grammatical aspect a euro, how the action of verbs flows into mere euro, and agreement marking. Aspect can be marked by changing the manner of movement of the verb. For example, Continuous aspect is marked by incorporating rhythmic, circular movement, while punctual aspect is achieved by modifying the sign so that it has a stationary hand position. Verbs may agree with both the subject and the object, and are marked for number and reciprocity. Reciprocity is indicated by using two one-handed signs. For example, the sign shoot, made with an L-shaped hand shape with inward movement of the thumb, inflects to shoot, reciprocal articulated by having two L-shaped hands shooting at each other. ASL has a productive system of classifiers, which are used to classify objects and their movement in space. For example, a rabbit running downhill would use a classifier consisting of a bent V classifier hand shape with a downhill directed path. If the rabbit is hopping, the path is executed with a bouncy manner. In general, Classifiers are composed of a classifier handshape bound to a movement root. The classifier handshape represents the object as a whole, incorporating such attributes as surface, depth, and shape, and is usually very iconic. The movement root consists of a path, a direction and a manner. Finger spelling ASL possesses a set of 26 signs known as the American Manual Alphabet, which can be used to spell out words from the English language. These signs make use of the 19 handships of ASL. For example, the signs for P and K use the same hand shape but different orientations. A common misconception is that ASL consists only of finger spelling. Although such a method has been used, it is not ASL. Finger spelling is a form of borrowing, 
a linguistic process wherein words from one language are incorporated into another. In ASL, finger spelling is used for proper nouns and for technical terms with no native ASL equivalent. There are also some other loan words which are finger spelled either very short English words or abbreviations of longer English words, for example ON from English ON, and APT from English apartment. Finger spelling may also be used to emphasize a word that would normally be signed otherwise. Syntax The basic word order of ASL is disputed. Most linguists agree that ASL is a subject-verb-object language with various phenomena affecting this basic word order. Basic SVO sentences are signed without any pauses. Father a euro love a euro child, the father loves the child. However, other words orders may also occur, as ASL allows the topic of a sentence to be moved to sentence initial position, a phenomenon known as topicalization. In object-subject-verb sentences, the object is topicalized, marked by a forward head tilt and a pause. Chilled topic, father a euro love, the father loves the child. Even more word orders can be obtained through the phenomenon of subject copy. In subject copy, the subject is repeated at the end of the sentence, accompanied by head nodding either for clarification or emphasis. Father a euro love a euro child a euro father copy. The father loves the child. ASL also allows null subject sentences, where the subject is implied rather than stated explicitly. Subjects can be copied even in a null subject sentence, in which the subject is omitted from its original position, yielding a verb object subject construction. Love a euro child a euro father copy, the father loves the child. Topicalization, accompanied with a null subject and a subject copy can produce yet another word order, object-verb-subject. Chill topic, love a euro father copy, the father loves the child. These properties of ASL allow it a variety of word orders, leading many to question which is the true, underlying, a euro or a basic a euro order. There are several other proposals that attempt to account for the flexibility of word order in ASL. One proposal is that languages like ASL are best described with a topic a euro comment structure, where words are ordered by their importance in the sentence rather than by their syntactic properties. Another hypothesis is that ASL exhibits free word order, in which syntax is not encoded in word order whatsoever, but can be encoded by other means. Iconicity, a common misconception is that signs are iconically self-explanatory, that they are a transparent imitation of what they mean, or even that they are pantomime. In fact, many signs bear no resemblance to their referent either because they were originally arbitrary symbols or because their iconicity has been obscured over time. Even so, in ASL iconicity plays a significant role. A high percentage of signs resemble their reference in some way. This is due to the fact that the medium of signed language e a euro sparse a euro naturally allows more iconicity than oral language. In the era of the influential linguist Ferdinand de Saussure, it was assumed that the mapping between form and meaning in language must be completely arbitrary. Although onomatopoeia is a clear exception, since words like choo-choo bear clear resemblance to the sounds that they mimic, the Saussurean approach was to treat these as marginal exceptions. ASL, with its significant inventory of iconic signs, directly challenges this theory. Research on acquisition of pronouns in ASL has shown that children do not always take advantage of the iconic properties of signs when interpreting their meaning. It has been found that when children acquire the pronoun a euro ya a euro unregistered trademark, the iconicity of the point is often confused, being treated more like a name. This is a similar finding to research in oral languages on pronoun acquisition. It has also been found that iconicity of signs does not affect immediate memory and recall. Less iconic signs are remembered just as well as highly iconic signs. See also, American Sign Language Literature, Bimodal Bilingualism, Great Ape Language, of which ASL has been one attempted mode, sign name, legal recognition of sign languages, notes, in particular, Martha's Vineyard Sign Language, Henniger Sign Language and Sandy River Valley Sign Language were brought to the school by students. These in turn appear to have been influenced by early British Sign Language, 
and did not involve input from indigenous Native American sign systems. See Padden, Lane, Pillard and French, and Johnson and Shimbri. The ABBA copyright Charles Michel D.L.A. Pamel Par copyright E, founder of the Parisian school Institut National de June Salwoods de Paris, was the first to acknowledge that sign language could be used to educate the deaf. An oft-repeated folk tale states that while visiting a parishioner, a Perm LP met two deaf daughters conversing with each other using FSL. The mother explained that her daughters were being educated privately by means of pictures. A Perm LP copyright he is said to have been inspired by these deaf children when he established the first educational institution for the deaf. C. Reuben, Robert J. Sign Language its history and contribution to the understanding of the biological nature of language. Actor Otto Laryngological 125, 464 Euro 7 doi, 10.1080 slash 00016480510026287. PMIDA 16092534, Padden, Carol A. Folk Explanation in Language Survival in, Deaf World. A Historical Reader and Primary Sourcebook, Lois Bragg, ed. New York, New York University Press PPA 107 a Euro 108. ISBN A 0-8147-9853-5A. Whereas deafness was genetically recessive on Martha's Vineyard, it was dominant in Henneke. On the one hand, this dominance likely aided the development of sign language in Henneke since families would be more likely to have the critical mass of deaf people necessary for the propagation of signing. On the other hand, in Martha's Vineyard the deaf were more likely to have more hearing relatives, which may have fostered a sense of shared identity that lead to more intergroup communication than in Henneke. See Lane, Pillard and French. Although some surveys of smaller scope measure ASL use, such as the California Department of Education recording ASL use in the home when children begin school, ASL use in the general American population has not been directly measured. C. Mitchell A. L. Stokoe himself termed these shams, but other linguists have referred to them as phonemes. C. Bahan. References. Bibliography, Armstrong, David. Karchmer, Michael, William C. Stokoe and a study of signed languages, in Armstrong, David. Karchmer, Michael. Van Cleve, John, The Study of Signed Languages, Galaldit University, PPXIA Euro Kshix, ISBN A978 1 56368 123 3, retrieved November 25, 2012. Bahan, Benjamin. Non Manual Realization of Agreement in American Sign Language. Boston University. Retrieved November 25, 2012. Bailey, Carol. Dolby, Kathy. The Canadian Dictionary of ASL. Edmonton, Alberta, The University of Alberta Press. ISBN A0888643004. Bishop, Michelle. Hicks, Sherry. Orange Eyes, Bimodal Bilingualism in Hearing Adults from Deaf Families. Sign Language Studies 5, 188 Euro 230 DOI, 101353 SLS. 2005.0001. Retrieved December 3, 2012. Collins, Stephen. Adverbial Morphemes in Tactile American Sign Language. Union Institute and University A. Costello, Elaine. American Sign Language Dictionary. Random House. ISBN A0375426167. Retrieved November 26, 2012. Herbert, Hope, A Preliminary Survey of the Sign Languages of Malaysia, in Baker, Anne. Van den Bogaird, Bepi. Krasborn, Ono, Cross Linguistic Perspectives in Sign Language Research, Selected Papers from TISLR, Hamburg, Signum Verlag, PPA 31 Euro 46. Retrieved December 3, 2012. Johnson, Trevor. Shimbri, Adam. Australian Sign Language An Introduction to Sign Language Linguistics. Cambridge University Press. ISBN A0521540569.
retrieved November 27, 2012. Kegel, Judy. The Case of Sign Languages in the Context of Pidgin and Creole Studies. In Cowenberg, Sylvia. Singler, John. The Handbook of Pidgin and Creole Studies. Blackwell Publishing. ISBN A0521540569. Retrieved November 27, 2012. Clymer, Edward S. Bellegy, Ursula. The Signs of Language. Boston, Harvard University Press. ISBN A978-0-674-80073. Lane, Harlan. Pillard, Richard. French, Mary. Origins of the American Deaf World. Sign Language Studies 1, 17 Euro 44 doi, 10.1353 slash SLS. 2000.0003. Retrieved November 25, 2012. Liddell, Scott, Modality Effects and Conflicting Agendas, in Armstrong, David. Karchmer, Michael. Van Cleve, John, The Study of Signed Languages, Galled at University, pp. Xia Euro Xix, ISBN A978-1-56368-1 123-3, retrieved November 26, 2012. Lucas, Seal. Bailey, Robert. Valley, Clayton. Hutt Euro Unregistered Trademark S Your Sign for Pizza? An Introduction to Variation in American Sign Language. Washington, D.C., Gallaud at University Press. ISBN A 1563681447 or Mitchell, Ross. Young, Travers. Bachelder, Bellamy. Karchma, Michael. How many people use ASL in the United States? Why estimates need updating? Sign Language Studies 6. ISNA 0302-1475. Retrieved November 27, 2012. NIST, Victoria, Sign Languages in West Africa, in Breen Tari, Diane, Sign Languages, Cambridge University Press, PPA 405 Euro 432, ISBN A978-0-521-88370-2A, Carol, Sign Language Geography, in Martha, Gaurav. Napoli, Donna, Death Around the World, New York, Oxford University Press, PPA 19 Euro 37, ISBN A019973253131, retrieved November 25, 2012. Solomon, Andrea. Cultural and Sociolinguistic Features of the Black Deaf Community. Carnegie Mellon University. Retrieved December 4, 2012. Sue Paula, Samuel. Cripps, Jody. Toward Universal Design and Reading Instruction. Bilingual Basics 12. Retrieved January 5, 2012. Valley, Clayton. Lucas, Seal. Linguistics of American Sign Language. Gallaud at University Press. ISBN A 1 56368 097 1. Retrieved December 2, 2012. Van der Hulst, Harry. Channon, Rachel, Notation Systems, in Breen Tari, Diane, Sign Languages, Cambridge University Press, PPA 151 Euro 172, ISBN A978-0-521-88370-2A, External Links, Accessible American Sign Language Dictionary, One Stop Resource American Sign Language and Video Dictionary, National Institute of Deafness ASL Section, National Association of the Deaf ASL Information, American Sign Language, The American Sign Language Linguistics Research Project, Video Dictionary of ASL.